After watching this video, you should be able to apply your understanding of the main vector forces of ventricular depolarization spreading from the subendocardium to the subepicardium and predict what the QRS complexes will look like in any given lead. Now specifically, we like to focus on leads V1, V2, 1, AVL, V5, and V6 as our key leads when we analyze an ECG. Now let's review the main vector forces and recall that the first force is the interventricular septal forces that spread in the rightward, anterior, and inferior orientation from little arborizations coming off the left bundle branch. And the second main force is the ventricular free wall forces and those are divided into the left ventricle and right ventricle forces with the left ventricle being electrically dominant in the leftward and posterior orientation and somewhat variable orientation in the frontal plane, but here we just wrote inferior. Note that the ventricular basal forces are not shown and will not be discussed in this video. So here's the frontal plane with our six limb leads. Note that leads 1 and AVL, their positive poles are pretty close to each other over on the left side, and we're going to actually strip away four of the six extremity leads. We're going to leave leads 1 and AVF because they're perpendicular pairs, and we're going to put in our vector forces and generate a vector cardiogram loop for the QRS complex. So starting in the center, we have our rightward and inferior oriented septal forces, which we labeled here as vector one. And then although the LV forces are somewhat variable in the frontal plane, we're going to have it sticking down inferiorly down over here. We'll call that number two. Note that it's bigger than our number one vector. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect these vector heads with a vector cardiogram loop, indicating that there are multiple vectors that are not shown here that are all contained within this loop. We can put some arrows to show direction. And now this is our frontal plane QRS vector cardiogram loop. And we're going to use this to predict what the QRS complex is going to look like, and we're going to do that for lead one. So the way we do this is we take our perpendicular lead and we consider that to be the isoelectric line, electrically zero. And since the positive pole of lead one is over on the right, any part of this loop that's on the right side of lead AVF is going to be a positive recording. And on the left side, going this way, we're near the negative pole of lead one, so anything on the left of lead AVF is going to be a negative recording. Anything that crosses the AVF is going to be zero. So now we can take a look at what lead one is going to look like. And if we start in the center, we see that we start to go towards the left away from the isoelectric line and the magnitudes are relatively small until it hits the isoelectric line. So we can see that what we're going to have here is going to be a small negative deflection. Okay, so now we're at the isoelectric line, and now we start to grow in time to go away from AVF towards the positive pole of lead one at a much bigger magnitude, and then we start to go back smaller and smaller vectors until we get to the center point again. So we're going to grow, the QRS complex is going to go up positive pretty big, and then it's going to go back down to the isoelectric line. So that's what lead one would look like, and this would be named a small q big R for lead one. And that's what we usually see in lead one. Okay, so now here is the transverse plane, and remember we have our V1 and V2 leads that are more right and anterior, and then we have V5 and V6 that are more leftward posterior, but we're going to strip away some of those leads and we're going to leave V6 and V2, they're perpendicular pairs, which makes it convenient because we're actually going to look at what the QRS complex looks like in V2 and V6. So we're going to start in the center again and we're going to put in our septal vector. And remember, it's right and anterior, so we have a small vector pointing in the rightward anterior orientation. And then our left ventricle free wall forces, which are electrically dominant for the ventricular free wall forces, they're over to the left and posterior. And it's bigger because the left ventricle is bigger mass than the interventricular septum. We'll label that number two. And then we're going to connect the heads of these vectors and all the ones that are not drawn to make a vector cardiogram loop again. And we can put some directionality onto it. So this is the transverse plane QRS vector cardiogram loop. 
Okay, so let's take a look at first what V6 would look like. So what we need to do again is take the perpendicular lead to V6, so that would be V2, and that is the isoelectric line. So everything that's on the right side of V2 near the positive pole of V6 would be recorded as a positive recording. And everything on the left of V2, since it's near the negative pole of V6, would be recorded as a negative recording. So now we start in the center, and we see that for V6, as we're looking at what's going to happen, we have the vector loop go towards the negative pole, somewhat small, and then goes back to the isoelectric line. So we have a negative deflection. And then it goes to the right pretty big, far away from V2, and that would be a positive deflection. So we're going to label this QR. Now we can look at what V2 is going to look like. And the perpendicular to V2 is V6. So everything that is below V6 near the positive pole of V2 is going to be recorded as a positive recording. And then every part of the vector cardiogram loop that is above V6 near the negative pole of V2 would be recorded as a negative recording. So now we go through the same loop again, but now from a different perspective, we can see that we're getting a positive deflection that grows and then it gets back to baseline, back to the isoelectric line, so it's gonna be a somewhat small positive deflection. And then now, starting at this isoelectric line, we're gonna now grow negative, much bigger, and then we're gonna go back towards zero. So this QRS complex is gonna be negative and then come back up. So we have an initial positive deflection called an R wave and a negative S wave. So we can see that we're looking at the same electrical events, but in V2, the small septal R wave deflection is now recorded as a small septal Q deflection in V6, and the dominant S in V2 that reflects the left ventricle free wall forces is recorded as a dominant R in V6. So now what we can do is we can write in a summary of the key leads and what the QRS complex is supposed to look like. So we'll start with leads 1, AVL from the frontal plane, and V5 and V6. And generally what we should see is what we, we drew for lead 1 and V6, which is a small Q and a dominant R. And remember, the small q represents the interventricular septal depolarization, and the dominant r is from the left ventricle free wall forces. So now we also can look at what leads v1 and v2 look like. And we looked at v2, and it's the same principle for v1. They're generally our rightward anterior leads. And what we see here is a small septal r deflection and a dominant s. And this is all what we should see as normal QRS complexes in these key leads. And that concludes this video on vector cardiography, the QRS vector cardiogram loop.